Hello, St. Peter's members and all of you who are watching this today. I welcome you to this time of worship. I am Yuli, the pastor at St. Peter's in Millbury, Ohio, and I would like you to know that no matter who you are and no matter where you find yourself on life's journey, you are always welcome with us. Today's scripture readings come from Acts chapter 2 verses 42 through 47 and John 10 verses 1 through 10. But before I read these passages for you, I'd like to share a video with the words of Psalm 23. A reading from Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. A reading from John chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. Very truly I tell you, Pharisees, Anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is a shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. 
This week, someone shared an article with me from the Harvard Business Review entitled, The Psychology Behind Effective Crisis Leadership. I know this is such an exciting and interesting way to start a sermon, um, but stick with me. As I glanced at the title, I was ready to just keep scrolling, and initially I did, since I assumed that I could just add it to the already lengthy list of articles I have read about leadership um, that in a nutshell tell us that the, that leadership is about having a vision, that good leaders are the ones who can articulate and hold the vision for their, for their organization. And now these Articles, the, the newer ones, the new blog posts, tell us that since our, our world has changed, a good leader needs to have a vision for our future and needs to be able to hold our gaze on what is to come. And I agree. Vision and envisioning is so incredibly important, especially now. I have been doing some envisioning myself, and I encourage all of you to do, so, do the same. I've been envisioning ways that we can do um, church more effectively, um, how we as a church can be more relevant. Um, I've been envisioning about ways that we might better live out God's love and grace in our communities and in this world. I've been envisioning how we as a country might be able to rebuild in a way that truly gives value to those on the margin on those who give value to those who are most vulnerable in our in our country. So yeah, I thought this article would be sharing some of the same, encouraging us to envision. Now, after a colleague of mine um, of mine encouraged me to actually take a look uh, at this article, I sat down and I read it. And by the second paragraph, I was stunned to read that the author was saying, something completely different. He argued that good leadership in times of crisis depends on a leader's skill at holding. Yes, holding. Holding is a term that is used in the field of psychology as the ability to contain and interpret, especially in times of uncertainty. That rather than focus on a conceptual framework that derives towards a future goal, leadership is, in the author's words, um, is thinking clearly, offering reassurance, helping people feel secure, and clarifying what is happening around them. This argument of holding as effective leadership makes sense to me in these times, right? But what stuck out to me most about this vision of leadership is that we as the church, we don't have to look to the Harvard Business Review to point out this leadership model as effective. Because in reality, it is jumping out at us um, throughout our sacred texts. I think of Noah, who literally built a container for life to survive through the storm? Or how about Moses as he strives to keep his people together and cared for on their journey through the wilderness? In fact, we don't even need to look beyond our given lectionary scripture passages that we just read. In John, Jesus is speaking to his disciples and using a number of I am statements to define his role to his followers. He says, I am the gatekeeper. I am the gate. And in the verse to follow that we didn't hear today, he says, I am the shepherd. The Sunday is traditionally celebrated as Good Shepherd Sunday with our reading in John and also um, Psalm 23. Through these shepherd images, Jesus communicates to his followers, not just who he is, but how his identity functions, how he desires to relate to his followers. Jesus' role is one of protection, of care, of orientation. In essence, he is holding them. Which makes 
so much sense if you think about it, especially if we look at the context in which the Gospel of John was written. John was written at a time of uncertainty and fear uh, for their own community. And so as they strive to write down the story and teachings of their Savior, of Jesus, they recalled a, a leader who indeed held them offering them reassurance and helping them to find meaning and direction in a time of uncertainty. The same holds true for the, the early Christian communities depict, de, depicted in the book of Acts. The budding Christian communities depicted in this book of Acts are living in an in-between time, a time when Jesus is no, no longer physically with them, and they are eagerly waiting his promised return. As they prepared for Jesus's return, they sought ways to follow and model Jesus's presence, model Jesus's leadership and values in the meantime. And what did that look like for the early church? It looked like breaking bread together, praying for one another, giving all they could and sharing all that they had. As they waited in uncertainty, they told the stories of their Savior and made meaning of who he was and why it mattered. And they cared for one another and they provi provided for one another's needs. In essence, they held one another. In holding one another, they were remaining faithful to the teachings of Jesus. And by holding one another, they were able to ultimately build the foundation on which we stand today. In this period of our lives, we find ourselves here in similar, similar circumstances. Yes, the, the cause is quite different, but we too are living in a time of fear and uncertainty as did the early church. We too are waiting for the storm to pass. We too are longing for a glimpse of what life will look like on the other side of all of this, with varying levels of frustration about our inability to know that yet. So what are we called to in the meantime? You guessed it. As individuals, as leaders, as the church, we are called to hold. As evident through our scriptures, we have a God who is offering a holding presence in our lives. And each of us, we are called to do the same. We are called to offer a holding presence by showing up to support, um, to offer support, even if it is over the phone or virtually. We are called to offer a holding presence by bearing witness to one another's pain, by giving permission to feel whatever it is that we are feeling without shame or, or, or being overwhelmed. We are called to offer a holding presence by offering reassurance and by helping to bring a sense of security. And when the time is right, we can help to find new meaning. We can create space that encourages curiosity to consider different ways to understand our circumstances and eventually to imagine our future together. As the leadership article says, the core of holding is acknowledging distress and difficulty without giving in to powerlessness. In other words, friends, this is hard, this is confusing and filled with so much unknown, but this is not the end. This will not crush us because we are in this together and together we will get through this and together we will step into a world that is filled with even more love than there was before. As a community who looks to Christ as our shepherd for guidance and for protection, 
as people who have experienced the way that God has held us and continues to hold us through the tallest peaks and the valleys of death, we hold as we are held. And that right now is exactly the right thing to do. Amen. At this time, I invite you into a time of prayer as we listen to a, an absolutely beautiful and powerful prayer, um, a blessing, uh, a praise song for this pandemic. Um, it is written and read by Christine Walters Paintmare. Praise be the nurses and doctors, every medical staff bent over flesh to offer care, for lives saved and lives lost, for showing up either way. Praise for the farmers tilling soil, planting seeds so food can grow, an act of hope if ever there was. Praise be the janitors and garbage collectors, the grocery store clerks and the truck drivers barreling through long, quiet nights. Give thanks for bus drivers, delivery persons, postal workers, and all those keeping an eye on water, gas, and electricity. Blessings on our leaders making hard choices for the common good, offering words of assurance. Celebrate the scientists working a way to understand the thing that plagues us to find an antidote, and all the medicine makers. Praise be the journalists keeping us informed. Praise be the teachers, finding new ways to educate children from afar and blessings on parents holding it together for them. Blessed are the elderly and those with weakened immune systems, all those who worry for their health. Praise for those who stay at home to protect them. Blessed are the domestic violence victims on lockdown with abusers, the homeless and refugees. Praise for the artists and poets, the singers and storytellers, all those who nourish with words and sound and color. Blessed are the ministers and therapists of every kind, bringing words of comfort. Blessed are the ones whose jobs are lost, who have no savings, who feel fear of the unknown gnawing. Blessed are those in grief, especially who mourn alone. Blessed are those who have passed into the great night. Praise for police and firefighters, paramedics, and all who work to keep us safe. Praise for all the workers and caregivers of every kind. Praise for the sound of notifications, messages from friends reaching across the distance. Give thanks for laughter and kindness. Praise be our four-footed companions with no forethought or anxiety, responding only in love. Praise for the seas and rivers, forests and stones who teach us to endure. Give thanks for your ancestors, for the wars and plagues they endured and survived. Their resilience is in your bones and your blood. Blessed is the water that flows over our hands and the soap that helps keep them clean each time a baptism. Praise every moment of stillness and silence so new voices can be heard. Praise the chance at slowness. Praise be the birds who continue to sing the sky awake each day. Praise for the primrose poking yellow petals from dark earth. Blessed is the air clearing overhead so one day we can breathe deeply again. And when this has passed, may we say that love spread more quickly than any virus ever could. May we say this was not just an ending, but also a place to begin. Thank you.